Hi everyone, can you hear me? I can see Marcia, Maria, Denise. Good morning, all very hot in Iowa today. Afternoon from beautiful sunny Caerphilly. Afternoon from a melting Leicestershire I've got so far. So if you could just let me know if you can hear me. So Laura's saying not very loud and Denise is saying yes can hear. Good morning, blessed Sunday all, Rosemary is saying. Yes, can hear me clearly, Maria's saying. Hi everyone, hope you're all okay. Hearing you loud and clear is say, Sue is saying. Jason's saying I can hear you. Okay, that's good. So can any of you that normally, yes, can hear you. Thanks, Heather's saying. Hi, JD Cougar, hope you're okay. Um, hi everyone, hope you're all enjoying the warm sunny weather and good health. It's better now, Laura's saying. Hello from sunny Wales, can only just about hear Wendy's saying. Okay. So the majority seem to be saying okay and a couple saying can hardly hear. <clears throat> so I'll just wait for a few more people to jump on and see what other people are saying. Does the sound sound any different than it normally does on a Sunday to the people that are normally here? Marcia's saying I can hear you. Hello everyone, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Patty H is saying, hi Patty. Rosemary's saying yes, can hear you. Hear you just fine, JD Cougar's saying. Okay. So hopefully it's not my end then, it's just hopefully maybe at the other end. Um, I don't know if I can turn the microphone up anymore, let me see. Just give me one minute, let me try and have a fiddle. Right, I've, I've had a fiddle, but I don't think it's made any difference. So if anybody can just... Um, Denise is saying, I, I think that might be Denise because I had my phone on, which I've now turned the sound off on my phone. Um, Terry's saying, hi Ashley and everyone can, can barely hear you. Good sound here, Barbara's saying. Sound about the same, Maria. So I'm not quite sure what's going on. So Sue's saying, I can always hear you fine. It made some difference. It has made great difference. That's better. Okay. Um, I've got a new microphone basically. Um, so normally I just use the microphones that are in my cameras or my iPad. 
but I've plugged in an external microphone. Everything seems to be okay, but obviously this is the first time I've used it on a live. And the majority of you seem to be saying everything's okay, but then a couple of you are saying not so good. Wendy's saying that's a bit better. Hi Karen, hope you're okay. So I'm not actually sure, um, but I think I'm just going to crack on anyway and let's see what happens. So basically I didn't have anything planned for tonight. Let me get rid of this. Um, I didn't really, ha really have anything particularly planned, but a few weeks ago somebody messaged me and asked me would I show heat transfer vinyl. So Denise is saying can still hear you twice. Okay, let me have a fiddle and see what's going on. Right, Denise, just tell me now if this sounds any different or not, if you can still hear me twice. Karen's saying fine at my end. Cheryl's saying I hear you fine. I'm just waiting to see if Denise can answer and let me know whether she's still hearing me twice. A lot better. Okay, so basically what I've done now, I've turned the volume off on my iPad, which is how I control all my cameras, and I'm just using the microphone. So Denise is saying fine now. Okay, right, well, we'll, we'll, we'll stick with this and see what happens. I mean, technically the, the volume and the sound should just come through this external microphone now. And to be fair, I've got it as close as I can get it to me at the moment while I'm sat at this desk. I am going to have to move everything with me when I go over to my other desk in a few minutes. But Alison saying hello, all good here, welcome back. Oh, thanks Alison, hope you're okay. Right, so do we all think it's fine for me to carry on? So that I can get going and we can see what we can do tonight. Just waiting for the comments to catch up because there's generally a delay. Hola from Argentina. Is that Annie? Welcome. Right, I'm just going to plod on because I can't see any more comments. So we'll just crack on and see what happens. Right, okay. So as I was saying, basically, I didn't have anything planned for tonight. A few weeks ago, I can't, it's probably more than a few weeks now, to be fair. Time just runs away with us. But Maria's saying yes. Okay. Um, somebody contacted me through YouTube, I think it was, and asked me if I'd show, carry on, okay, asked me if I would show how to do heat transfer vinyl. And at the time, it wasn't long after I'd done something using the heat transfer vinyl. So I left a message to say, yes, I'll go over it again, but I've just done a, a recent video and you might want to go and, you know, have a look at it on the channel. So as I've got nothing specifically planned for tonight, I just thought, I do that. So basically what I'm going to do, I'll show you what I've got here. I've got a tote bag. This is um, like a canvas tote bag. These are available from Maker Superstore. I've used one of these in the past. I used it last year when we did the NHS project, which I think was a Maker's it might have been a maker zoom project so you might everybody might not have seen that Thea saying good evening everyone uh, I am late joining tonight sorry don't worry Thea I'm literally only just starting so I've got a couple of these tote bags left over so what I thought was 
Um, I've not got any regular heat transfer vinyl, but I've got the glitter heat transfer vinyl, which you've seen me use before if you've watched any of the live streams. So I thought what I'd do, I'd go over to Canvas, have a look in there in the vinyl section because I've got the vinyl blade which gives me some vinyl designs but you know you could do this with anything it's basically just the process that I'm going to show hi Ashley I'm watching you on TV and they've had to turn the volume right up okay so some of you are saying it's fine and some of you st are still struggling um, I don't know what else to do to be honest Try and bring this a bit nearer yet again and see if this makes any difference. So anyway, I'm going to go into Canvas, have a look in there, see if there's anything that I can find that will go on the front of this tote bag. Then we'll send it over to the machine wirelessly. I'll cut it using glitter heat transfer vinyl because that's the only kind of heat transfer vinyl I've got and then apply it to the front of this bag so it's kind of just a bit like a refresher so I'm going to flick you over to canvas workspace now I have already got it open on my computer on my other desk and I've opened the computer version just in case I want to add any text or anything like that that's different than you know what's contained within the online version. So let me just flip you over to that screen and then I'm just going to bring myself and my microphone over to my other desk and we'll um, see what we can come up with. So I'm just going to move my phone which is what I use for the comments. And I'm just going to bring over the microphone and my iPad and put them on my other desk. So now you should be able to see my Canvas workspace screen. So Terry's saying can hear much better now. Thank you. Okay. Maybe I just need to have this microphone a little bit nearer than I did have it then. Okay, so if you can just let me know that you can all see the canvas screen. I can see it on the iPad, which is what I'm watching on, and my phone. But if you just let me know that you can all see it. Not seeing any comments now. I know there's a delay. Oh, brilliant. Thank you, JD Cougar. You can see the screen. Right, so I'm in Canvas Workspace for Computer. And as I said, Canvas showing OK, Canvas Workspace screen is showing brilliant. All can see fine. Fa fantastic. Okay, so as I say, just to make it a little bit easier for me without having to think about everything seeing great can see the screen i can see fab i thought that i've opened canvas just canvas just before i came live and i've gone into my vinyl auto blade section and and i'm only using this as i say just to make it a little bit simpler for me because i would got nothing planned and I've been mindful that somebody asked me this question about heat transfer vinyl weeks ago. So I'm just trying to make it a little bit easier for me. But you could use anything. You could, you know, use a design that you've already got. You could use a design that you've created in Canvas Workspace. You can use an SVG, whatever. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. What's the difference between the vinyls? Okay, Maria. So there's heat transfer vinyl, which basically means needs heat to be applied 
There's glitter heat transfer vinyl, which is basically the same, only glittery, and that's what I'm going to use tonight. And then the other type of vinyl that can be used is vinyl that you would use, say, in home decor projects. So if you want to make, say, a sign for your living room wall or a sign for your craft room wall, you would just use regular vinyl. And sometimes it's called removable vinyl. Sometimes it's called home decor vinyl. Um, Oracle, I think, use, I think they call theirs 631. But then there's also water resistant vinyl, which I think from memory is 651 if you use Oracle. And basically that's for anything you're going to get wet. So, you know, if you want to put a sign on the bin on the outside of your house that's open to the elements, you would need, you would, you, you would need a vinyl that is suitable for, you know, going outside. If you're going to put vinyl on a cup or a glass that needs washing, then you need you know, a vinyl that's suitable for water, which as I say, Oracle, I think is 651. A lot of the vinyl I use is outdoor vinyl, you know, water resistant vinyl, if you like, because I have a friend who's a sign writer and oh, a year or two ago, I literally went and bought a stack of his off cuts. So the majority of my vinyl, even though I might use them on indoor product, on indoor projects, are projects that can go outside. I do have some vinyl that's indoor vinyl, which is very, very old. It's like puzzles vinyl. And I'll show you, when I go back over to my other desk, I'll show you how you can kind of tell the difference. So for now, I hope that's okay, Maria. Oh, hi, Mandy. Um, sorry I'm late. Great to see you again. Daughter just left after seeing her for the second time since September. Hope you're okay. Mandy, I'm fine and how lovely that you've been able to see her. That's brilliant. Right, so to save a bit of time, what I'm thinking is this feather up here. So if I click on the feather, it comes in. Now, I did measure the area on the front of that bag just before I came live. And I know that I've got an area of at least 12 inches wide by 10 inches high, probably could go bigger, but because the heat, um, the glitter heat transfer vinyl that I'm going to be using is A4 sheets, I'm obviously limited to the size of my vinyl for this project. So I'm thinking the feather, but I don't like the wild and free. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to right click on this design and ungroup it. And then I can get rid of the words and then I'm left with the feather. And if I come over here to the top right hand corner and come to the second icon down, which is edit with this feather selected, it's telling me it's 8.95 wide and it's about four and a half high. That's inches. So that's a decent size. So maybe I could add some text. So what do you think? Has anybody got? Any suggestions for maybe putting some text with this feather to go on this bag? Um, I'm not particularly bothered what it says. As I say, it's just a project that I just want to show you how to create something, how to send it over to your machine, how to cut it and then how to apply it. Hi, Lynn. Oh, sorry, I've not been here for a few weeks. I've been busy with Hannah. Denise is saying, my cousin is a sign writer and I must admit, I'm never without outdoor vinyl. Very handy. Freebies are great. Yeah. Um, the, the, the beauty of outdoor vinyl is that you can use it outdoor or indoor. So, you know, it's, it's, it's best if you can to get outdoor. If you're stuck and you're just doing something that's going to be inside and, and never see any water or never go outside and you can only get, you know, indoor vinyl i think sometimes they call it home decor vinyl some people call it removable vinyl then you know just use that tickled pink <laughs> that's good i like that <laughs> light as a feather okay these are good give me some more guys and then we'll take a vote um, but yeah, if, if you've got access to tickle pink, tickle pink sounds good, Maria's saying. 
if you've got out access to um, outdoor vinyl, then I would go with that. And especially if you've got a local sign writer, this bag is light as a feather. That's another good one. Um, as I say, I bought a stack, um, literally bought all these ends of rolls. And they were, I think they were something like maybe a metre wide by about a metre high. They were big pieces and I kind of chopped them down into 12 inch sections and then I just rolled them all up and I keep them all in a drawer together. Right, so we've got tickled pink, light as a feather and we've got this bag is light as a feather so far. So we've got two for tickled pink. So let's see what we can do. Let's try tickled pink. So we'll go over to the text icon and click left on the screen and that will bring the text box up. And we've got tickled pink. So now let's find a font. How about birds of a feather? Okay, there's another one. We will try tickled pink for now and then we'll see how they look. Have I spelt it right? T-I-C-K-L-E-D, tickled pink. Okay, so if we come up to the top with the word selected where we've got the fonts, because I'm using the computer version, I've now got access to all the fonts on my computer, as well as any of the Canvas workspace fonts. Another vote there for tickled pink. So let's have a look and see how this is going to look in various fonts. So this particular font's called Angela, A-N-G-E-L-L-A. -L -L no idea where I've got that from, probably from Defont. Let's see what else we've got. I don't think, no, Astine is not gonna be right for vinyl, it's too skinny. This bag is not a featherweight. <laughs> That's another good one. Uh, let's see, I'm just scrolling through my Calgary, I think is a canvas font. Let's just have a look and see what else we've got on here. See if anything jumps out at me. That's lobster, tickled pink. Once you start looking at fonts though, this is the problem. You can be looking at them forever, can't you? This one's called Liverpool. Don't particularly like that one. I might, let, I might just go back to the first one, this Angela. So I can see that the letters overlap on this, but they look as though they're all individual letters. So with it selected, I'm gonna come over here to the right hand side I'm going to hit weld and see what happens. Do you have the O whale font? Oh, I don't think so. Let's let's go down and have a look. Don't think I have. Where's it from, Sean? Wonder if we can just go and have a quick look on them. Um, da font. Let's just go and have a quick look on Defont and see if we can find it. What was it called? Oh, whale. Oh, that's that's not right. Oh, whales I've put. Ooh, let's have a look at this one. You tickled my fancy. <laughs> Jason. <laughs> um, custom preview. So let's have a look how this one looks in this. T-I-C-K, tickled pink. Let's make it large and see how it looks. Does that look like the right one, Sean? That says, oh, whale. You tickle my fancy, yeah, okay.
Good question. No idea. Sorry, but it's my go-to font. <laughs> oh, Sean. Okay. Um, right, well, let me go back to the other one for now. So let's go back to Canvas and go back to where we were. So I've got, this one's called Angela, A-N-G-E-L-L-A. -L -L -A. I'm guessing it's probably from Defont. I've no idea. Don't remember downloading it, but I do have some fonts that I got, um, that I bought that were, I've got like a license for. So whether it's one of those or not, I'm not sure. Right, let's have a look and see if this all weld. So the word selected literally as I've typed it, I'm gonna come over to here and I'm gonna hit weld. And it does actually all seem to have welded quite nicely. So let me fill it in with colour just to see how it's all looking. I think I'll use that one actually. It looks quite nice and it doesn't look too... Some of these bits look a bit skinny. So I'm, I'm wondering whether it will weed okay. But what I could do, I'll right click and make a duplicate and I'll put the duplicate on one side for now. And then what I can do, let's try adding a very small offset and just see if it makes these skinny bits any better. Right, so Maria's saying, has anyone's sound gone? Everything still looks okay for me. So can anybody just let me know if the sound is still okay? Okay, so Sean's saying, yes, that's the one, but doesn't suit your word. No, that's fine, Sean. Fine sound here, Maria Barbara's saying. Okay, right, I'm just going to crack on and hope that everybody, it, it might. Maria, if somebody can just maybe put a note to Maria and say, maybe go out and come back in or refresh the page or something and see if it's maybe just at her end. If everybody else's sound is sounding only, sounding okay and everything's saying it's still recording and I'm not getting any messages, so I'm just going to carry on. Right, let's have a look and see if we can do an offset on this and just see if I can make this text a little bit thicker. So I'm going to come over here to the bottom of the page where it says offset. I'm going to take the offset down to as small as it will go, 0 0.04. I'm going to untick... Um, create an offset line only around the outside edge because I don't I want it on the inside as well I'm going to make it an outward offset and say okay so that let's have a look if we drag the offset now does look a bit thicker so I think what I'll do let's have a look I can get rid of that one now because I don't need it I only made a duplicate just in case I messed this one up so if we look at this and I fill this with blue and then I just hit subtract. Now some, ah, I know something's not welded. So let's undo. So let's have a look. So if we go right click and ungroup, then if I select just the word pink and see if we can subtract just to punch the gaps out, and the P is disappearing because it's not touching. So I'm actually going to leave this. They will cut out. I usually like to show you how to punch out the middle so you've got a, a hole here. But I can see that all the middles are there. So I know it's going to cut okay. So I think I'm going to use the word that I've added the offset to. Only for the simple reason that these sections here are slightly thicker now. This looks a bit thin and I don't know how thin these would be for when I cut. So I'm going to get rid of the original and we'll use tickled pink, I think. Right, everyone's saying sound okay, sounds good. Wendy Ann is saying she's back now. I don't know, I don't know what's going on, to be honest. And I don't want to unplug the microphone because if I unplug this microphone now, I might lose the stream. So I think I'm just going to stick with how it is and I'll just keep plodding on. So I've got the feather and I've got the tickled pink. If I select both and right click and make them a group, 
that will now tell me how big they are up here. So we've got 9.47 inches wide and we've got 7.37 inches high, which is more than enough for my bag. I could even drag it out and make this bigger. So long as it fits on my A4 piece of glitter heat transfer vinyl, uh, sorry, heat transfer vinyl, you know, I should be fine. That's what I did, Ashley, all okay now. Brilliant, right, okay. So we've got the feather, we've got the tickle pink. I'm gonna come up to the top of the page. I'm gonna to come to file. I'm going to come to export slash transfer FCM file because I'm gonna send it over wirelessly. If you don't have a machine that's got the wireless capability, you can choose export to FCM and save it on your desktop or put it on a USB. I'm just gonna send it over wirelessly. But one thing I forgot to do, and I'm surprised you're not all shouting it at me. I need to reverse it because you need to flip or reverse when you cut in heat transfer vinyl. So I'm gonna select the whole group and I'm gonna come over here and flip it so it's backwards. So any kind of heat transfer vinyl, whether it's plain heat transfer vinyl or glitter heat transfer vinyl, if you're using words, you need to flip them because you're going to cut it in reverse. And I'll show you what I mean when I go over to my other desk in a minute. Right, so now we've got that, I can come back to the top of the page. I can go to File, Export and Transfer FCM file via the internet. And it's saying to me, the registered machine is ready to download the transfer file from the internet. I can now say, OK. So now I'm going to go over to my other desk and go to the scan and cut. So you're just going to have to give me a minute while I pick up everything and just scoot onto my next desk. Right, let's find my scan and cut machine because it's gone to sleep. So let's put that on. Right, you should all now be able to see my scan and cut machine. Just tidy some bits away from my desk. So if somebody can let me know that you see in the scan and cut, that would be fine. I need to get my mat. Jason's give me a thumbs up, brilliant. Okay, right, so let me find my spatula. You can see it fine, brilliant, thanks guys. Right, so if I now come to retrieve data on the bottom and I've just sent the file over from canvas so I'm going to click the laptop computer icon here with the wi-fi signal that's going to retrieve my file so I can save it if I want to or I can just say okay and cut it I'll save it for now so I'll say save and I'll put it into the machine for now. <laughs> Charlotte saying, can see the machine screen. I keep wanting to press the retrieve data button. Uh, OK, so I'm going to say OK to save it. So I've got the design, which is grouped, and that's fine because I'm cutting it all out of the same piece of heat transfer vinyl. Hopefully I've not made it too big from a piece of vinyl I'm going to use. So let's just come back to 
just having to rearrange my desk a bit, sorry. So I've got my regular standard cutting mat. I've got my heat transfer vinyl. So let's find a piece that's going to go on this bag that's big enough. So I need a piece that's at least A4, so the green isn't, the purple isn't. I don't think the silver's going to look that great. might use the black actually. The, the pink I've chopped into, so I think it's going to be the black piece because that's the biggest piece I've got. So, um, was it was it Maria that was saying before about what's the difference with the vinyl? So this is where I'll, I'll show you quickly. Bring a couple of different bits of vinyl in. So these two vinyls, the orange and the green, look the same. Obviously this one's got a shine on it this is glossy and this one's matte this the green one is old this is oracle 631 so to me i think from memory the 631 is indoor vinyl so i would use this green vinyl for any indoor project that isn't going to get wet and if you look at it it's got the color on one side and it's got paper on the other so with this type of vinyl you cut on the vinyl side so if you're doing words you don't need to reverse them okay and then you use a transfer sheet you weed it and then you use a transfer sheet and I've got other videos showing how to do that this orange glossy one is it just says jack on it uh, saffron and it's siri sign so this is outdoor vinyl but again it's got the color on the outside and it's got paper on the back so you know if i was cutting say the name of my house to put this on my bin outside I would cut the name so it reads the right way and cut into the colour, the colour of the vinyl, okay? So that's um, regular vinyl, two different types. Heat transfer vinyl or glitter heat transfer vinyl, which is what I'm using here. I'm not sure how well you'll see this, but this is glittery. It has a shiny surface on top of the colour, got a bit of fluff there, hang on. But when I turn it over, it's got a matte version of what's on the other side. And that's generally how you know that it's heat transfer vinyl, because basically this clear sheet that's on top of this colour is the transfer sheet. It's built in to heat transfer vinyl. So it doesn't matter whether it's a, a flat, gloss or matte heat transfer vinyl colour or whether it's glitter it will have a shiny transfer sheet on top so that's generally how you can tell the difference so if I just show you show you the pink one so this is pink glitter heat transfer vinyl it's out of the same um, set of vinyl I bought as this one and if you turn it over you can see it's got a paler pink on the back so this is generally the way to tell heat transfer vinyl. And because we're using heat transfer vinyl, we put it shiny side down onto the mat. So we cut in into the dull side and that's why you have to mirror your words 
because if I put my name here, Ashley, starting with an A, and cut it like this, when I flip it over, it would be backwards. So because we put shiny side down, we have to flip the words. So this is just going to go on here now, shiny side down, just going to burnish it with my spatula onto my mat. So does, is that okay? Does that make sense? Is everybody clear about the vinyl and, you know, whether you mirror or don't mirror words? Just put these two away just to give me some more room on my desk. So I'm going to load this now into the Scan and Cut machine. So let's flip you back to the Scan and Cut machine. Load this mat. Uh, Maureen saying sorry I'm late don't worry about it Maureen hopefully it will be recorded so you should be fine Charlotte's saying it does make sense thank you and Jason's giving me another thumbs up okay brilliant right so first thing I'm going to do now is do a background scan Barbara's saying very clear Wendy's saying yes thanks okay fab because I know it is confusing with the different types of vinyl and when you mirror and when you don't mirror but I think the, the way to just remember it is if it's heat transfer vinyl, then mirror it. If you're not applying heat to it, you're fine. Rita's saying, I can hear you in this in sweltering France. Oh, bless you. Right, so we're back on the scan and cut machine. You should hopefully all be able to see my screen. I can see it. I'm looking at it, as I say, in various places. So I'm going to hit the background scan icon and I'm going to say start. Send the mat through with this piece of heat transfer vinyl. Thank you for showing me the difference, Ashley. I understand the difference now. Oh, brilliant. Well done. Thanks, Maria. So, let's see. I seem to be working in a smaller and smaller space. Got stuff everywhere. Right, I'm going to go into the wrench icon on my machine and change the background to light because I can't see with this being dark. And you know what? This design literally only just fits on. So let's see, I might make it a little bit smaller. So edit, object, edit, size. And I'm going to take the height down a bit just so it fits on this piece of vinyl a little bit better. Charlotte's saying, are you using a vinyl cutting blade? Sorry if I missed that info. No, I've not got there yet. I was just about to tell you that, Charlotte. And yes, I am. Thank you so much for taking the time to share the different. Very helpful as always. Sorry late joining, but I can. Well explained. Hear you. Okay. I'll move the microphone again. So I can see my piece of glitter vinyl and I can see my word. I'm just going to move it over just to sort of try and get as much as I can on here and try and maybe leave me a little bit that I might be able to use on another project. So I am now going to put the vinyl blade in the machine. So here's my vinyl blade. It's the one with the blue top. I'm just going to pop that into the machine. Come back to the machine. I'm going to say OK, 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 OK again. Select, cut. And then I'm going to go into the wrench. Oh, half cut is already on. So that's good because I only want to cut through the top layer. But for anybody that doesn't know, if you go into the wrench and you scroll down until you find half cut it's usually off by default um can't remember actually the last time i cut anything half cut so maybe i forgot to turn it off so i need half cut on which it is 
So I'm going to say OK and I'm going to press Start. So that's just hopefully going to start cutting now through this back layer of this vinyl and then we can get to weeding it and seeing if I can weed it okay and then see if we can apply it to this bag. I've not added a weeding box Kathleen, um, I'm literally just going to chop any waste off. That's why I just moved the design over on the screen. But you could add a weeding box, it's entirely up to you. I don't always, just if I remember. Okay, so while that's cutting, has anybody got any questions or anything they want me to go over? I'm just gonna get my, 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 my drink of juice off my other table. So hopefully you can see this cutting. And Kathleen, for the weeding box, I could have added the box while I was on the machine or I could have added it while I was in canvas. But as I say, I didn't do it in canvas, probably to be honest, because I forgot. Um, but that's why I moved the design over once I got it on the screen. So I'll have a hopefully like a strip of vinyl down the right hand side, which I can cut off and use on another project. Charlotte, you use half cut on all vinyl. So if you've got an auto blade machine that has the auto the half cut facility, um, or any machine, if you've got the half cut facility, then use that for vinyl because the whole idea of cutting vinyl, you don't want to cut through the backing. So on the on the heat transfer vinyl, I don't want to cut into that clear backing because that's my transfer tape. But on the two rolls of vinyl I've just shown you, the orange and the green, I would be cutting from the coloured side and I wouldn't want to cut through the paper. So you use half cut for all vinyl, irrespective of what type. So I hope that helps. Yeah, that's correct. And while I remember, I'm just going to put my easy press on. Alison's asking me, do I have a video about layering vinyl? Um, I honestly can't remember. But if on the on the YouTube channel, once you're in my channel, if you go to the little magnifying glass and in the search box, if you type vinyl, anything that I've load, uploaded with vinyl will come up. Yes, Kathleen, half cut for all vinyl and sticker sheets, correct, because you don't want to cut through the backing. I'm just going to put my Easy Press on while this is cutting. Um, right, I need to plug this in on my desk and I'm running out of space on my desk so just give me a minute right what we're saying um, it's a lot easier to remember if it's for all right what's my machine saying stopped operating to restart shift the scanner lever to position two and press start key why has it done that halfway through how bizarre okay so i've shifted the lever on the machine like it's asking me to and i've pressed start no idea why it's asked me to do that all of a sudden So it looks as though it's carrying on okay, so let's see what, what we're saying now. Um, so Alison's saying Minnie Mouse and Bo, for example. I don't think I have Alison, but I'll have a look and see if maybe I can do 
something with that. My TV is bringing up subtitles. Some of the translation is making me chuckle. <laughs> oh dear, I hate to think what it's saying. It's like when I dictate into my phone, that predictive text puts all sorts in my messages to Hannah, I tell you. Right, this looks as though it's still cutting all okay, so I've no idea why it decided to ask me to move the scanner lever. I literally am working in about six and a six inch space on my desk now, so I'm gonna have to just clear a few things away in a few minutes once we've got this cut. These machines have a mind of their own sometimes, you're right, they do. I mean, I'm actually keeping my fingers crossed that this is actually going to cut through properly. Right, it's finished. So it said finish cutting, okay, I'll unload the mat. Right, I'm just going to have to make a bit more space on my desk, so you're just going to have to give me a minute. Let's flip you back. I've got microphones, I've got iPads, got all sorts going on here. Let me just clear some space. Move the tote bag for a minute. And take this off the mat. Put that on one side. So, I've got a section here that I can chop off and try and save for another project. So I'm going to... Just bring in my trimmer. And trim this down without hopefully cutting into my design. Let's just double check that that's not in the way. I think if I chop it there, I'll be fine. So let's hope I've just not chopped any of the design off. and said told Jim to wait till you're finished tonight as we're having a barbecue okay I'll try and be as quick as possible then right so let me find something to weed this with so you should all be able to see my desk now and I've got my vinyl so what i'm going to do now i'm going to find a corner and just so i'm on the dull side i'm on the side that i cut into not the shiny side and i'm just going to try and lift a corner and start pulling this vinyl away and i've obviously not thought about this well enough because i've chose black and black's not easy to see so you're going to have to bear with me, but I'm going to try my best to keep this in the camera, but to weed it so that I can see it as well. So I'm just going to try and get as much of this up as I can.
So Sean's saying, is it possible to check if it's cut properly before removing it from the machine in case I need to cut it again? Yes, Sean. What I would do when this is on your mat, let me just bring my mat back in for a minute. So when this is on your mat like this, lift up a corner down where there's no design. You know, just lift it up and see when you start to pull it away if it's you know if it's cut somewhere near your design and if it's not then just put it back through your machine to be fair this this does look as though it's it's cut fine um, and I have cut this glitter vinyl before in a um, you know a Sunday night live so I was kind of confident that it would cut the only thing I'm not confident about is being able to see it to weed it and still keep it in the camera for you lot because as I say, with, with it being black, it's not that easy. But I'll try my best. Um, you know, I could end up losing parts of the design. So I can see a bit there that's kind of just stuck here. So I'm just using my little piercing tool to, um, you know, prise these inner bits out I can see it's cut it's just that I don't want to actually stick my head right in the camera or she's not going to see anything so I'm literally just helping the bits that need to be weeded away so hopefully you can all still see what I'm doing I mean, what I could do, this isn't vital, I could have cut the design in half so I've got the tickled pink and I've got the feather, which I might do in a minute. We'll see how we get on with this. So I'm literally just pulling these bits from under the bottom of the letters. So I think I've got all the words. So if I turn this over, you should be able to see it now, tickle pink, and then obviously I need to get the middles out. So I'll take those out now. So again, I'm just going to lift them out and just dump them on me on my desk for now. So we've got all the middle bits. So I'm sorry if I'm missing any comments. Um, think weeding is very therapeutic somebody's saying have you got a light box you could use no I haven't I haven't got a light box later game but we'll catch up later I love vinyl but hate it when I lose the dots of the eyes I know that's what I mean I, I could end up losing bits of letters here with using black but we'll we'll plod on and we'll see how we get on I mean it's at the end of the day this is only just to show you the process I'm doing this because somebody asked if I'd show how to cut heat transfer vinyl again. So it's not vital for me. But, you know, what you could do, like, um, Alice, um, is it, did Alison just say about the light box? Or you could hold it up to a window during the daylight. Right, so I'm going to turn it back over. I think there's bits in the middle of the letters here that need to come out. So I'm just making a little pile of these inner bits of vinyl they get everywhere don't they, they when you start weeding vinyl but I do find that heat transfer vinyl is a lot better and easier to weed than regular vinyl don't know if anybody else has found that but um, certainly for me, I do. So we've got T-I-C-K, we've got the spaces out of there. I think that's all all right. I just need to get rid of that little stray bit because I don't want to iron that onto my project. So I'm just going to pick up these bits and I'm going to dump them in my little rubbish box on my desk and then hopefully they're not going to get in the way when I start transferring this. So I think I've got them all. And then now it's the feather. 
Yeah, Alison, I do that. With regular vinyl, I tend to stick it on my hand and, and then put it all in a big pile. But heat transfer vinyl doesn't seem to be as sticky. Right, this is the bit that's good. I think we're just going to have to hold your breath now with this feather. Because, as I say, there's, there's just bits I can't I can't see. So I could end up, you know, ripping out bits that don't need to be ripped out but so again I've got a, a bit here now I can see it's just sticking within the feather I think this is going to be the tricky bit getting the these inner bits out of the feather got a stray bit there that needs to go in the box and I think what I'm going to do I'm just going to get as much of the outside off as possible This is a big section here that C needs to come away. So you just literally have to take your time with vinyl, you really do. So I've got a big chunk of vinyl there now. And then I've got all these inner bits. So this could take some time. Perhaps didn't think this design through. Let's see, because there's all kinds of little bits here that I think I can't see whether they need to come out or not. I think that bit does there. This isn't going to be that easy. What I might have to do with this, I might have to chop it in half, put the words on, and then go back and weed this when I can see it properly in the daylight. Because there's some of these tiny little bits that I literally can't see. Well, that was my, that was my easy press. I think it's turning off because it's been on for that long. Right, so there's another bit. So it's literally just going to be a case of what I can see to get out. I think there's a bit there. I don't know how oh I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this but these are like tiny tiny little slithers in this feather um I'll try my best we'll keep going if you want me to keep going I'll keep going if not just tell me and I'll I'll just cut the words we'll see how we get on might get to a point where it's too much because as I say some of these are ever so tiny so we might just do the words and I think this middle bit comes out as well this, this bit here comes out And we've got some slithers here. So while I'm doing this, has anybody else got any questions or comments? Um, when we know how to do vinyl like your lovely tickle pink bag, how easy and cheap it is to make. Glad you're here love my heat transfer project someone's saying something else to try 
credit card trembling again. <laughs> You kill me, you like you really do with you. You're so you, you, I love it. You're so funny, and you're so supportive. And I, you know, if I make mistakes or things go wrong, you, you just, you know, you tell me to just carry on. And I think we're getting there. I think there's a little sliver there that I've missed. It is a nice feather though. A little bit there. I think like um, Alison or somebody said, if you've got um, a light box, a project like this would probably be a whole lot easier. But to be fair, I don't do a lot of vinyl. I only tend to do vinyl projects when I'm doing, um, you know, a live for you guys. Vinyl's not something that I use an awful lot, to be fair. And I don't know why, because, you know, I've got, I've got stacks of the stuff. Right, let's see how we're getting on. I can see a bit there. So it's coming along. Let's see what you're saying. It's what makes the feather feathery, I'd say. Keep going as long as you can stand it. How's your daughter doing with golf? How's your legs being a caddy? Oh, Alison. Um, yeah, so while I'm weeding then, I'll... I'll um, I'll tell you a little bit. So, the last time I saw you, I think I was telling you that I was going off to Caddy for her in a 36 hole competition. And it was two rounds in one day. It was played at Mickelova Golf Course. So, anybody that knows Derby. It was at Michelover Golf Course. It was the Derbyshire Ladies County Championships. And she won. Um, and over the two rounds, she won by seven shots. Now, anybody that may know Michelover. It's not a flat course. So my poor little old legs, after doing 36 holes of caddying, to say the least, was shot and so was my, bag, my back. And literally, it was two rounds back to back. So I think, we te I think she teed off about half eight in the morning so half eight, nine, ten, eleven, half twelve, and I think we had to. Be, I think we got in about quarter to one, and she had to be back on the tee at twenty past one. So we literally ran in the clubhouse and um, grabbed a very quick bit of dinner, and then li literally had to be back on the first tee again. Um, but yeah, she won and she won by seven shots. So she's the Derbyshire Ladies County Champion. Now, obviously last year because of COVID, a lot of these competitions weren't played. So the year before, in this same competition, she came second, but so, so the year before she wasn't the, the stroke play county champion, she came second, but out of all the field that play, the top eight from the championship go forward and play match play knockout later on in the year. So what was it last year? 2020. So 2019, she came second in the championship. But that got her into the knockouts in the October, which were at Burton 
on Trent Golf Club and she played a quarter final, a semi final and a final and she won. So although she didn't win the championship in the championship in 2019, she came, she became the champion of the match play. So she still holds the match play title because there was no competition last year. In that same year, she won the girls championship. So she still holds that title and now she's just won the championship this year. So she currently holds all three major Derbyshire titles. So how amazing is that? So you can see when I say to you on a Sunday that I'm, you know, I'm, I talk about how she's doing. Um, I'm just a proud mummy. But yeah, I was absolutely knackered at the end of that 36 holes. I mean, it takes it out of you and but when it's a hilly course as well and it was it was two Sundays ago so it was a very very hot day it was it was a scorcher it started off sunny and bright it was a little bit cold in the morning at half past eight but within an hour or so it got very hot so we were literally playing there's just one little bit of this feather that doesn't want to come out here sorry um so we were literally playing in scorching heat i got burnt because i'm i'm very i'm fair skinned and hannah just goes darker and darker and darker right i think i've got well there's one little bit down there i think i've got everything and then monday just gone um i'll look at your comments in a minute i'm just trying to make sure i get all the the feathery bits Monday just gone, she was playing in one of those professional events again that she plays in as an amateur and she wasn't well. She has a stomach problem and we, we don't know whether it's, um, we think it's some kind of food intolerance, but we've not been able to get to the bottom of what it is. And she's been struggling for months and um, she was ill. On We travelled down last Sunday, that's why I wasn't here, because she had to go and do a practice round. And she was ill on the Sunday night. She got up on Monday morning and she was poorly. And I said to her, well, don't don't play. And she said, no, I've got to go. Anyway, she managed eight holes and then she had to retire injured because she was just so poorly. We literally pulled up at the golf club in, um, we were in, where were we last Sunday? I think it was Halifax. And on the Monday morning, we pulled up to the golf club and she got out of the car and literally had to run to the toilet too much information sorry um and then she came back and she had to run again and she said no it's all right I'll try and I'll see how I go and again it was another hot day and she was shaking she couldn't stop shaking um and she felt tired and lethargic and she just fell ill so after eight holes we had to give up and come in so but yeah so um let me see what you're saying Michelover course is only a couple of miles away from me, Sue's saying. Well, that's where we were two Sundays ago. Um, and it's hilly. <laughs> um, Alison's saying that's amazing. Um, well, that's fantastic. Congrats to Hannah. I used to live near there, but 14 miles away now, Thea's saying. I've done it for Jim. I know how you feel. It's it's exhausting. I mean, I know they play and they have to swing and all that, but it's exhausting being a caddy. Congratulations, Hannah, especially when you're my age and you're getting old. Um, yes, can see Ashley. Well, that's great. Well done, Hannah. Brilliant. But I'll bet you feel her stress worse than she does. I think I do. Um, all that hard work is paying off. Yeah. Congratulations to Hannah. Great job. Right. I think... I'm going to bring the tote bag back in and flip this over because I might might be able to see it better on the light colour. So what are you thinking? Does it look as though I've got everything, guys? I think I have, you know. But just keep tipping it up to the light just to see if I've got all the... Oh, I think there's one tiny little bit there that I've missed. Uh, there.
can't see it now I've turned it over I think it's there yeah there's a little sliver there this is what I mean you have to take your time with vinyl because you know the last thing you want to do is think you've got everything out and then iron it on your project and then you see a bit that's that's still in there that shouldn't be there but this is only a tote bag at the end of the day so um right let me let me see and congratulating hannah great job poor hannah i know she was disappointed but taking care of herself is vital i know so literally let me just move all this bit of vinyl now so she has um like a personal trainer um and he's been really really good with her and he suggested that for, for two weeks she literally just eats three meals a day that are dead bland so she's not allowed she's not allowed to eat any dairy um the hospital phoned her funnily enough the other day as a follow-up to her going for tests for intolerance a few months ago and they told her to not eat broccoli He's told her to not eat any dairy and she's literally just eating really plain food. She's got a nut allergy, Hannah, anyway, so she can't have things like almond milk. So she's literally having porridge every morning made with oat milk and all her food is dead plain, bless her. So she's really struggling at the moment, but she's been told or she's been advised to try it for two weeks and um, see if any of it helps with her stomach problems and then start introducing you know more foods again bit by bit to see how she goes um but all the stomach swells up and it's she just gets like so uncomfortable it's awful and that kind of gives her like irritable bowel so she's been recommended to take some tablets she had to go to the drop-in center on monday when we came home early she went to the doctor's drop-in center because our doctor couldn't see her um so they prescribed some tablets and then I found something else on the internet so she's taking two things at the moment right let's crack on because you don't want to hear about all our problems so let's just see if I can just iron this in half with the easy press just to get a center line so that's the middle of my bag and then if I fold this up and crease this, that's going to give me a centre line. So can you see that? So I've got this line here. Ignore this line. That's where the bag's just been folded for a few minutes. So I've got this line here and I've got this line here. Way to go, Hannah. Mum always carries the stress. I've just done that and it works. It turned out to be fats and brown bread. Oh, right, Jason. Okay, well, she's not eating any bread at all at the moment. But it's funny you should say fats because a, a while ago she made some like little chips in, you know, the air fryer. But she did put a tiny little bit of fat in there. And that always seems to set her off. So maybe it is something to do with fats. Oh, but better we don't want to hear all the good stuff going on. <laughs> right, so let's go back to this. So I'm going to fold this in half just where the words are and put a crease in the top. So that's going to give me a centre line of the design. And if I do the same this way, put a little crease there. I mean, this is not going to be perfect, guys, but... So I've got a centre line there and I've got a centre line there. So if I line this up, this should roughly be in the centre of this bag. So I've got, where's my sheet? So this is the sheet that came with my heat transfer vinyl. And for, heat, for glitter heat transfer vinyl, it says 320 Fahrenheit for 15 seconds. So, with the heat transfer vinyl that I bought, I, it also came with this silicone sheet. So, I'm going to put that over the top. I'm going to bring in my heat press. And this heat press isn't big enough to do the whole design in one go. So, I'm going to put it on and press start. And I'm just going to hold it lightly. 
Wow, amidst her challenges, she was able to pull through. Oh, but we don't want to. I've got that. Let's see if she plays a game with Charlie Hall. Right, so that's done that bit. I'm going to move it onto this half and do this half. So I'm doing 15 seconds, but because the design is bigger than my easy press, I'm doing 15 seconds on each bit. I'm just going to remove this and then try and remove this and see. And you know what I didn't do? I didn't put my heat press underneath. Should have used my heat press. But we'll see if this starts to peel away. So it's not peeling away. So I'm going to do it again with the heat press underneath it. And I'm just going to move it down because some of the feather is down here where you can't see it. Okay, then I'm going to bring this over so I'm still on the on my mat and do it again and see how we go. It's only because the design is bigger than my easy press. Um, I'm not sure. We'll soon find out if you can overcook it. I did a golf bag actually um, in these last two weeks. I I cut her name in white glitter heat transfer vinyl and on the pocket on the bottom of her bag I put her name and I made her a little um, a little logo, you know, with her initials. Right, so let's see if this so when you start to peel away, see now look, it's not coming away, so I'm just gonna apply a little bit more pressure I don't think it helped because I didn't have it on my mat first time round Barbara's saying when Hannah's tummy is sorted she will be invincible I hope so bless her she's really struggled see this doesn't look as though it's doing very well so we might have just made a complete and utter mess of this, guys. But we'll soon, if we if we have, we have, and you know, I don't know. <clears throat> and I can't remember whether I'm meant to leave this to cool. I think I'm meant to leave it to cool before I peel it. So we'll give it another quick go and see. And then what I'm going to do, <clears throat> I'm going to turn it over. So I'm going to leave the plastic on it. And just iron it from the back. going to remove the heat press mat because that's going to hold the heat and I'm just going to leave it to cool and see what happens because it looked as though the glitter was coming away with the letters uh, yes you can it totally melts away but it is in a way helpful with something that ended up on fabric which should not have been there okay so we'll see I don't know whether this could be I mean, you've seen me do glitter heat transfer vinyl before and it works fine. Um, if you remember, I did the K Sera Sera, didn't I, on the Cricut um, canvas bag that came with the heat press. So I'm just wafting it to try and cool it down. Mandy G saying she thinks she peeled hers back while it was warm. I can't remember what this says, whether it's a cool peel or a warm peel. It probably tells me on here, actually. It says warm. Just had a quick look. So we'll see. We'll see how we go. 
yeah it's done better now i think i was probably trying to peel it up when it was too hot so it seems to be coming away nicely now and one thing i would say about heat transfer vinyl you'll know when you've done it right because the vinyl kind of melds into your fabric so i'm not sure if you can see how sparkly that is but what i'm going to do i'm just going to put the paper back over it my heat press is still on and just give it one quick last iron just moving it around not concentrating the heat in any one place i'm going to turn the heat press off so just give me a minute while i unplug it guys and then it can be cooling down and then remove that and there it is on my bag and it's stuck it's not peeling up on you know any of the ends of the feather or anything so let me see if i can zoom you in a little bit and see if you can see this better I'm not sure how well you'll see it but it is glittery if I try and hold it up don't know how well you're going to see whether you're going to see it shining or not can you see the glitter it's lovely so that's the tote bag and as I say these tote bags they're a big size actually they've got a nice big wide um, you know like boxed bottom mm. And they're a good size and good long handles and the canvas is quite thick um not sure whether it's canvas or calico actually i think it's thicker than calico it's more like a canvas so that's you know a simple project that's taken me basically an hour and a half but we've been chatting and i showed you you know how to do it in how you know we took a while picking the font and everything didn't we so you know, it would be a simple-ish, easy project for you to recreate on your own. Um, and then obviously you just throw the transfer sheet away. You can't reuse these because, you know, you, they end up covered in glitter. Um, so with heat transfer vinyl, you throw the transfer sheet away. But with regular vinyl, you have a separate sheet of transfer sheet and you can reuse those several times. So what do you think? Oh, that's super. I love Glitter Heat HTV. That's gorgeous. Love this. Looks great. Add a few rhinestones to bling it up some more. Yeah, you could do with the rhinestone kit. Beautiful vinyl kit is calling me yet again. Um, do you have to wash the bag before applying the vinyl? Looks lovely. You don't have to, but you could do. Um, I mean, if it was a project that was going to be going in the wash a lot then you know you may want to wash it before but so long as you get the right type of heat transfer vinyl for the fabric it's going on then you'll be fine i mean this is a tote bag and to be fair this isn't going to get washed really probably hardly hardly you know hardly ever let's say so i've just used you know glitter heat transfer vinyl on this you can get heat transfer vinyl that can go on stretchy fabrics and that kind of thing so again you know you, you've kind of got to look at the type of vinyl for the especially if you're doing clothing you need the right type of vinyl for the clothing it's going on so if it was just a regular t-shirt type you know if it was a regular t-shirt material that's not spandexy or stretchy then you could use glitter heat transfer vinyl or regular heat transfer vinyl if you've got fabric that's got more of a stretch in it then there is heat transfer vinyl that is specific for that kind of fabric it basically stretches with the garment um maria's saying love it vinyl cutting blade works like a dream it does yeah i touch wood i've never had any problems with that vi that vinyl blade at all i just put it on half cut and you know let it cut and you know you've just seen me do glitter heat transfer vinyl i showed as i say several months ago now when well it was christmas wasn't it when i got the easy press i, I did some glitter heat transfer vinyl on another project i do let me find these i sell these adhesive kits in my shop and i personalize the bag with the word adhesive this is outdoor vinyl 
and these are all cut with the vinyl blade and it and it does cut perfectly every time so you can see you can see the sparkle Alison Gray it's lovely when you when you lift it up you can see it glistening in the light and I think the black although it was a bit of a devil for me to see weeding I think the black on this cream colored canvas tote looks nice I don't think the silver I don't it might have done but I don't think the silver would have looked as nice and that was I think the only other full sheet I've got in silver um, got to go Ashley what a beautiful project stay safe yes same to you Barbara take care Denise is saying looks great well done to whoever picked tickle pink yeah fantastic Ashley thank you again so that was my project for tonight guys now next week I honestly can't remember what I'm doing and where I'm meant to be so if hopefully I'll be here and I can do some kind of a live don't know what if I've got to go away again I think I have I think she's in another two-day tournament on the Monday and Tuesday but I'm not sure yet if I'm not going to be here I'll post a note on the community board on my YouTube channel letting you know but if you don't hear from me then hopefully I'll be here next Sunday so has anybody got any last minute questions or anything or anything they want me to go over again with this project? I'll just put my bits and pieces away. So this is another bag now that can go in the boot of my car for when I go and do my supermarket shop. I'll take a picture of it and I'll put it in the thumbnail for so for anybody that's coming late or catches this video another time this will be hopefully the thumbnail for the YouTube video hi Vicky <laughs> well I was chatting at first Vicky and then while I was weeding I was chatting so it's taken me a bit longer than normal this project But I am going to go now because I need to get something to eat. But if anybody's got any last minute questions or comments or anything, if they want to ask me now before I go, I know there's a delay, so I'll wait a few more minutes. I just love the sparkle on glitter heat transfer vinyl. It's lovely. Jason, you're welcome. Thank you. Hope you're okay, by the way. I know I've been busy and I've not been able to speak to any of my team in the last few weeks. I'm really sorry, but it's just things are a bit chaotic at the moment, as I say, with Hannah's golf and with her not being, excuse me, with her not being well. We just seem to be running around all over the place at the moment. Another great night, Ashley. Thanks again for your time. Off to watch Cruella, the new movie. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, take care and stay safe till next week. Yes, yeah, same to you, Lynn. Heather's saying, thanks, Ashley. Lovely session. Thanks. Have a good week. Yes, yeah, same to you, Heather. Could you please talk about cutting glitter, paper and or vinyl, what you shouldn't cut? Okay, Charlotte. So I have covered this before. So anything with glitter, you need to think twice before you put it through your scan and cut machine. That's the first thing I would say. So this is glitter heat transfer vinyl, but it was contained within that clear transfer sheet. So the, the glitter had got no chance of coming off and getting in the machine for something like this. But regular glitter, paper um, or cardstock, if it's very gritty, it's going to blunt your blade. That's the first thing. And if you rub your hand over it and the glitter comes off, then I would think twice about putting that through your machine. Now, having said that, there are some glitters that are very, very fine and smooth and are kind of encased within the paper or the cardstock. And they probably are OK to cut. And I've got um, just give me one minute got a little bit of an example here on my desk this is some new stamping up product and this is called um gold and rose and rose gold metallic speciality paper 
and this looks glittery not sure how well you're going to see this um but it's smooth so anything like this you're safe to cut with your scan and cut the other thing i would say is if you are going to cut glitter um i would always use an old blade i used to keep my old blades when my blades got dull from cutting paper and cardstock i used to keep my old blades and put them in the little plastic tube you know that they come in when you buy them new and write on them um you know glitter and just use them purely and simply for cutting glitter because glitter paper or cardstock will dull your blade so i don't know if that helps charlotte Terry saying thanks for another fun tutorial. Alison, you're welcome. Thank you. Candice is saying very cute. Good luck to Hannah. Um, all okay. Just got loads on with work. Okay, Jason. Thank you again, Ashley. Night all, Jason's saying. Right. So, yes. Yeah, so, as I say, glitter if it rubs off in your hand and if it feels coarse i wouldn't put it through your scan and cut if it doesn't come off in your hand and it doesn't feel coarse then i would keep an old blade and just use that that one blade for cutting your glitter okay charlotte that's fine um, again, I think if you on my channel here when you're on the home page there's a magnifying glass if you type in glitter anything i've done to do with glitter charlotte will come up so that might help you there will be videos on my channel okay i can't see any last minute questions or anything coming through so i am going to say good night leave you all to whatever you're going to be doing for the rest of your night i'm going to go and put this in the boot of my car with my other shopping bags and i'll use this when i don't do my food shop this week all being well, I'll see you next Sunday. If not, I'll leave you a message on the community board on my YouTube channel letting you know that I'm not going to be here. Um, great advice. Thank you, Alison saying. Right, I'm going to go now, get now, guys. Stay safe, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Enjoy your week, whatever the weather's going to be doing for us all. And hopefully I'll see you all 